powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on KPAX, Montana's news leader. Good evening, I'm Jill Valley. And I'm Dennis Bragg. The weather looking to hold up for trick-or-treaters tonight, but a major weather shift is on the way, including some winter weather warnings. Yes, for more on that, let's take it over to Chief Meteorologist Erin Yost. She has her first forecast now. Erin. Jill, that's Chief Nerd tonight. Just, you know. Oh, nerd. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. I'll let it slide this time. Uh, yeah, thank goodness Halloween doesn't fall tomorrow or on the subsequent days because it would not be pleasant for us trick or treaters. We are looking at a big pattern change. So enjoy tonight's drier conditions. Of course, a lot of clouds out there as we speak. A couple chances, though, uh, for some folks closer to the divide in northwest Montana to see an isolated shower or two tonight. But things will stay quiet, stay dry up until the overnight hours. We have winter weather advisories in purple that begin at midnight throughout the day tomorrow for some light accumulation, but boy, there is more to come. I've got all those details coming up in your forecast. Chief weather nerd. That's like what she's that. dressed yeah, up as. All right. Good, yeah. Well, Halloween, of course, the time of the year for scary movies, frightening decorations, and for little ones, maybe even those a little older than that, the excitement of trick or treating. But all that said, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, children are four times more likely to be hit by a motor vehicle on Halloween than on any other evening of the year. Of course, you want that costume to be a little scary while you're out there, but uh, not necessarily on Halloween. It has to be celebrated with safety in mind. The American Academy of Pediatrics says drivers need to be extra aware of kids, especially on those dark streets. That's probably the number one thing you got to do. Make sure if you have a darker costume, you're carrying a flashlight or something like that. Trick or treaters stay on the sidewalk or lit up streets and walk on the side of the road oncoming traffic. That's a rule you should never break. Plan on costumes that can be seen easily by using bright colors, reflective tape, or like I say, carry those flashlights. Make sure shoes, costumes, and masks fit too. That prevents a lot of tripping as the kids go up and down the stairs. Pediatric hospital uh, specialist Dr. Lori Cardi said they see various trick-or-treating injuries on Halloween night. So children who get injured that come to the emergency room can have injuries as minor as scrapes and bruises. They might have a broken bone from falling and tripping on their costumes and landing on their wrist. But the worst thing then we want to avoid is getting hit by a car where they can be severely injured. And if you don't have a flashlight for all the kids, make sure the group has one. Those glow sticks are great to have, too. You just give them a crack, throw them on your wrist, and you're set to go trick-or-treating tonight. In other news tonight, an Idaho man died on Highway 200 last night near his after his vehicle was hit by an elk that went airborne after it was struck by another vehicle. The Montana Highway Patrol reporting the crash happened at around 715 on Highway 200 just west of Potomac. A Toyota Scion being driven by a 21 year old woman from Great Falls hit an elk that entered the roadway that sent the animal airborne. That elk then hit a Dodge Ram pickup truck driven by a 21 year old man from Salmon, Idaho. MHP reports the pickup truck then went off the roadway and hit several embankments. The driver declared dead on the scene. The woman from Great Falls was taken to the hospital but was not hurt. Both drivers were wearing their seatbelts. A Missoula man convicted of drugging and raping several girls between the ages of 12 and 17 was sentenced to 100 years in the Montana State Prison with no chance for parole. 47-year-old Eric Nugent appeared in Missoula County District Court Monday before Judge Karen Townsend. He was convicted of 14 felony counts, including multiple counts of distribution of dangerous drugs, rape, sex abuse of children, and sexual assault. These crimes occurred between January of 2015 and September of last year with nine known victims whom he provided drugs to or assaulted. Due to the nature of his offenses and how he went about it, prosecutors requested that he be denied an opportunity for parole. Judge Townsend accepted that. Memorial arrangements have been announced for former Montana Governor Judy Martz, who died yesterday. A celebration of life for her will be held Saturday at the Butte Civic Center starting at 11 o'clock in the morning. The former governor will also be laying in state from 9 to 430 on Friday at the Capitol Rotunda in Helena. The Martz family says the public is welcome at both events. The 74 year old Martz died at her home Monday in Rocker after a long battle with pancreatic cancer. March was Montana's first and only female governor. A Republican from Butte, March won election as governor in 2000 and served a single term from 2001 through 2004. FEMA's administrator says not one dollar of the agency's money has been used to pay Whitefish Energy Holdings, the company with that controversial contract with the Puerto Rico Electric Power Authority to help restore the island's battered power grid. That leaves it unclear how the young company will be reimbursed 
for the nearly month of work it has finished, considering the island's government and utility authorities both filed for bankruptcy this year. The contract signed in late September called for an initial $3.7 million payment, followed by reimbursement of up to $300 million if it finished its work. FEMA Administrator Brock, Brock Long told members of the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee, though, that his agency wouldn't have signed off on the contract if they'd known about it. Senator John Tester questions the preface uh, judgment to hire Whitefish Energy. I've been in office 132 days. For 70 of those days, we've been actively responding to Harvey, Irma, Maria, and the extraordinary California wildfires as well. Um, each one of these events that I, that I just spoke of could truly be catastrophic events, standalone events, but they happen in rapid succession of 25 day period, which is obviously unprecedented. That I should be tickled pink that they gave a contract to a company in Montana, but as you look at the situation, two people, been in business two years, never done disaster work before, what kind of people are on this board? Major General Donald Jackson with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says the island's financial situation means utility companies were hesitant to engage out of concern they wouldn't be paid. And that's where PREPA stuck with the agreement with Whitefish Energy. The threat of proposed state budget cuts are starting to have trickle-down impacts on local agencies. MTN's Augusta McDonald continues tracking this story and joins us live in the studio with more. Augusta? Thanks, Jill. Dennis, there's still a lot that is unknown about what will happen next with the current budget shortfall facing our state. What we do know now is that some agencies are taking action to eliminate funding for programs already on the chopping block before official bu budget cuts are even being made by lawmakers or the governor. The Foster Child Health Program is a collaboration between Providence Medical Center, Missoula City County Health Department, and Child and Family Services. They received surprise notice on Friday that half of their funding, which comes from the state, was ending effective immediately. What we were really surprised was to learn that the funding was cut in advance of that decision actually being made. We didn't expect that. Um, we're partway into our fiscal year. We have kids on caseloads that need to be served. That's 50 to 60 cases that these health care providers work together on to provide critical services to vulnerable kids. Very important program that we have to really ensure that not only the foster child um, health needs are met, their medical, vision, dental, um, and any special needs they may have, but also it's a support for foster families when they have children come into their home that um, they don't know their medical history, that public health nurse visiting the home really allows a resource for the foster parent that also stabilizes placements in a very positive way for children. Grossberg says all three partners have a financial investment, so the program can continue as long as the health providers can piece together a way to fill the $65,000 gap left by CFSD eliminating this funding. Maybe lower some of the intensity of the visits with the, the kids. Um, we'll be looking at if there's any private partners that wish to support it and get us through this time. Uh, we wait for the decisions. What we're not going to do is abandon the children. This program has coordinated and provided the health care needs for 600 foster care kids in Missoula County since 2011. There's no word yet from Governor Bullock or the legislature about whether there may, may be a special legislative session to address budget shortfalls. Until then, $105 million worth of funding for Department of Public Health programs like this one are waiting to hear whether they will be able to continue their work with Montana's most vulnerable populations. Back to you. Thanks for the work on that story, Augusta. This funding cut also eliminates similar services for foster kids in Yellowstone and Cascade counties. Coming up after a nice Halloween evening, we're in for some big weather changes as it's back to winter. Aaron tells us how much snow we could see. And in our Montana Made series, meet an artist from the Flathead Valley who makes one-of-a-kind jewelry inspired by her travels around the world. Still to come here on KPAX.